So hello everyone, welcome to our Lunch and Learn today. We are talking about the truth about SARS. And this is really designed to answer a lot of your questions and to not necessarily have you relying just on the media in terms of getting all of your information. Uh, today, uh, we're joined uh, by one of what I would consider one of our export experts on the ground in the country of Nigeria, Confidence, uh, who's not only a Nigerian citizen who lives in Lagos, but he also operates throughout the travel and tourism industry and keeps his finger connected to the pulse of the country. And we are also joined by Dennis, who is a friend of Confidence, who has definitely uh, been on the front lines when it comes to the protests that have been happening in the country of Nigeria. So welcome, Confidence and Dennis. How are you gentlemen doing? Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm doing great. That's good. That's good. And so uh, we're we will just for those of you who are watching, we're gonna have a number of people who will be joining us. Welcome, Tyra, uh, to the conversation today. Um, and so the way we're going to kind of run uh, today's Lunch and Learn is that, you know, those of you who are participating, you are welcome to ask whatever questions you'd like to ask. Uh, if for some reason we're not able to get to it, we will make sure we uh, we will make make sure that your questions get answered. And so here in the States, it's the lunch hour. And I know uh, for you gentlemen who are in Nigeria, it's roughly about uh, 6 p.m. there, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, 6 11. 6 11, okay, okay. And so before we get uh, deep into today's discussion, I first want to start out by asking the question uh, for those who, who are watching. Can you please take a moment to explain what is SARS? We have had a number of people who um, will likely watch the playback, and this is something that they may not necessarily uh, know the meaning of. Uh, so can you guys take a minute to explain what, what SARS uh, really stands for? And uh, can you tell us a bit more about, about it and when it was created? Okay, um, I think I'll comment on that because I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian and also in fact, I'm born and brought up in Nigeria, so anything that concerns most of the security stuff, I I go through it so much. Now, SARS, the, the spelling of SARS is S-A-R-X. Now, it has a, a full meaning, which S stands for special, the A stands for anti-robbery, the A-R stands for anti-robbery, then the last X stands for squad. Now, this SARS, they are the one that, they, they created it in, in the year 1992, and uh, their job, uh, is to fight crimes like robbery, case of robbery, stolen vehicle, anything concerning crime. Not even not cyber crime. Quote me, not cyber crime. You know, the cyber crime is um is handled by EFCC. So when but when it comes to normal uh, uh, robbery, just robbery, maybe house robbery, bank robbery, or stolen vehicle, anything at all concerning robbery, kidnapping, and the rest, that is when they will involve this SAS of a thing. So that was um during where they launched it that in the year 1992. Not until now that they, they are they're already messing up before the protests kick off against them. So that's the coming of SAS. And that's what's unique thing about SAS. Actually, is the special uh, just like you said, is the special anti-robbery squad of of the division of the police. Okay. They actually meant to come into uh, operations when there's a, a very high profile uh, case of robbery, kidnapping and all that. Yeah, there are special type of police force that fight against anything crime, I mean, anything criminal activities in the country, minus cyber yeah, crime. So it, okay, we have a special squad as well that takes care of anything about fraud and, and uh, internet, uh, uh, it's okay. Right now on the line, we have Tyra. Um, what 
I want to pose this question to you, Tyra. Hi, how are you? Um, so, so, Tyra, where exactly are you located? So I'm currently, sorry, I just got back from university. I'm in England right now. I study at Oxford University. And we're going to be hosting our own NSARS panel discussion. Um, and I will be moderating it. So I'm trying to get all the information I can um, from other events about SARS and listening to more Nigerian stories. My mom is um, Nigerian, and I've been to Nigeria a couple of times. So it's great to interact with more Nigerians and hear about their uh, experiences with SARS because what's going on is so sad and I think as well you're being from America it's interesting for us to kind of compare those differences um, when it comes to a special anti-robbery police force versus what we have in the United States so I think definitely wanting to bring that international understanding for people that don't really understand how Nigeria works, um, the, pol the politics system, and how we even ended up with SARS. So yeah, I'm definitely interested for this discussion. Definitely. So I'm glad you said that because what I want to hear from you is more of like from on your end, what have you heard? Like what are some of the images and the, the um, stories that you've heard in the news media about it? Well, it's so funny because I guess living in England, I'm surrounded by a lot of Nigerians. So I think if you're on social media, you see all the images that are happening um, with people talking about them being in the front lines and how the lights turn off and then they start shooting. Um, then you hear videos of like sounds of gunshots, you know, being American, <laughs> I feel like I'm a little bit used to hearing gunshots, which is quite sad. Um, but I think in speaking to a lot of the Nigerians, each one of them has a story. Each one of them has had, um, issues with SARS. And I think really getting the gist of it is that it's it's an issue that affects everyone, especially the youth. Um, and listening to how it works, it's quite crazy. You know, you could just be walking and then stopped. And then they can kind of ask you, okay, for a bribe, I'll let you go because it seems like you stole that phone. You're being accused of something you didn't do. So then you can be taken to the police station or you can go to the ATM and kind of bribe your way out of it. So I think it's you know, so, so sad, but it seems like the SARS issues, is just not police brutality, that it really goes beyond that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, I guess, inside of what I've heard and everything that I've heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. And even here in, um, like where I'm located, because a lot of what, because I'm located in the South, a lot of what we see on the news is just you know, a lot of the images of just violence and, you know, we have no idea if they're mixing old footage with new footage to fit the narrative that they want it in terms of the news media, what the story that they want to tell. And so I felt it was really important to bring these two gentlemen on to like really tell us, you know, what is really happening on the ground right now as, as we speak in Nigeria. All right. What is happening in Nigeria is just the, the 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 government is trying to suppress the whole story and bring the whole uh, matter under control. Okay, and uh, and they did that first by disbanding the the SARS unit after the public outcry, and uh, we I believe you must have heard about. Uh, the, the army getting in to shoot people at the protest ground. And you also had about hoodlums coming in to join, uh, to dis destroy things in, in league, most especially in Lagos. Okay, so the protests about this whole SAS thing and the, the, the police brutality generally and the just injustice in, in governance. Firstly, the idea of SARS in Nigeria, I'm a young, I'm a youth in Africa, Nigeria to be precise. And um, it pains me a lot seeing the way these people harass we youth. Even from the onset, I don't know, right from 1992 when SARS was, was launched, I, the, 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 we don't normally see them. They are, in fact, they are real seeing these people out there. When it comes out, it's during the kidnapping or anything, robbery or anything at all, criminal case at all. But suddenly we start seeing these people rating young people, if you dress clean, you dress beautiful or you dress handsome, the next thing, my friend, you're a Yahoo boy. My friend, you're a criminal. 
my friend, you are this. They will force you into the car or into the Asiana or into the or anything, into the vehicle or their Ilios, take you first to the um to the station. And the billing of release is, is very, very bad. When I'm talking about the billing, the billing is something, in fact, it's very incredible. I've experienced it before. So they said that they said I should pay 500000 naira for what? Say because I, I, I look like a Yahoo boy. Okay, now, in my own country, I won't look fresh. I won't look clean. I'll be looking tattered, walking on the streets. I don't know if you understand me. Now, mm -hmm. these are the things going on. So the youth of this country took it upon themselves because... What really uh, intoxicated this um, SARS and SARS something is there's a state called Delta State at Uelu. This guy was driving with his legs off 350 X. So he was driving. Suddenly, this SARS of, of a people just blocked the guy and, you know, shot him. They didn't even ask him questions. They just shot him and dragged him out. I was like, he's a criminal, he's a thief. A fresh, if you see this guy, this guy is, I don't think, I don't know if I, if I, can, if I can send the video, if I can look, look at the video, I might send it to you. They, they shot this guy, fresh dude guy, just because of he had dread, look clean, and he's driving Lexus. Now, this guy came around and then dropped him down, then drove the car down, as in, they didn't even bother to mind if the guy survived or not. They just, they just dropped the guy down there, you know, drove the car off. So this thing I intoxicated, everybody were like, okay, what is wrong with these people? At first, it was even whiskey. When um, Buhari was wishing at Twitter, was wishing um, Donald Trump quickly, um, quickly uh, recovery. Then, where well, whiskey was like, oh God, this one you are just wishing your, you wishing another country president quick recovery. Have you solved your own problem in your own country? And SARS. That was when all the protests started. And SARS. And SARS. And SARS. Now, I'm not just a travel blogger. I'm also a comedian. MC Ami Boy is my stage name. I also protest. I was, I, in fact, I was at the front line with microphone, making people happy at the protest ground and every, everything going on right there. Now, these people you see, now, normally, the government listening to us, they resolve the, the SARS of a thing and brought what they call SWATs. Now, <laughs> my question now is, this SWAT they are bringing in, it's not just uniform that we change and put in the same people, the same criminals, they are acting as a SARS in that same uniform. So we've decided to end the SARS and SWAT. From there, based on the bad governance of the country, based on the, the electricity, you know, most of us, our areas, before we see light, is like three, four months. <laughs> Though we, there are some places that if you go, you know, you know, there's light constantly. Somewhere like Lekki, but when it comes to somewhere like uh, Ajegule, um, Badagri, no, Badagri, Mali have like, yeah. Then when it comes down to a joy area, many, many of these places, you find out that these people, they lack electricity, bad roads. In fact, a lot of, if, if I let me say bad government. So we decided to use that medium of answers to follow up everything at a go. So I would trash it out at a go. So that was when. The government that brought this idea of um, you know sending army i forgot the man's name the is a general more for something more for i don't know but i, I because i'm a blogger i blogged a lot so i i blogged the guy's name i was like okay this is the guy that the, after the switch because the switch was the only the celebrity that was standing at the protest that went and released the fire run then i've already i'm, I'm already on my way home so it was that night they released gunshot sent military men to shoot an unarmed protesters this these people are not they're they not they're not, they not with guns they're not with cutlass they're not with anything but they have to release fire in fact if i record uh, um, the death that occurred that day it's been more than 15 people that that died that they that lose their life and some wow. of them was injured even the old men as in come and see we uh, old men we are protesting for for good governance now that is when you know, during that was when the protest now somehow reduced. So everybody now focused on social media, like protesting on social media presently right now. So we we youth we brought out our own forum, Youth um, Democratic Party, so that we can come up for next 20, uh, 2023 presidential election. And apart from that, we dropped our point of agenda to president that if he cannot um, redeem this point of agenda, he should resign from the presidency. He is not capable to handle this. That is the state of Nigeria. So that mm -hmm. is it. So, so, so one, and, and I'm going to say this, Tyra, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in as well. But when it comes down to it, like what is, what would you say is sort of like the goal of the protest? And have you guys seen any sort of 
progress. Like we're kind of here in the States, we're kind of just starting to hear about this, but in terms of the protest, has, how long would you say it's been going on and, and what sort of the, the goal you guys have in mind? Yeah, the goal for the protest was to end SATS one, not to reform the police and stop, not the only end SATS, stop police brutality. You know, it does not even affect only the youth. It affects both the people that are, um, they are making ends meet through or cannot driving, they get driving. You see that police officer will tell you, and uh, once it's eight o'clock in the night or seven o'clock, no bike should pass in this street. And any bike that passes there, police will arrest that bike man. They will, they will not arrest, they will seize the bike. Before you collect your bike, you pay a sum of 20,000 naira. And now, the person you have collected 20,000 naira, have you asked yourself, how much has he made in a day? How many passengers has he carried in a day? Has he made up to 5,000 naira? And most of them will come and, like the ones I know in my area, they were like, ah, MC Ami and Dennis, please, I need 15K, I need 10,000. And I was like, okay, take, we will fund it back next month. Okay, no problem, we will sign agreement, then the person will go. That's how, so it's not only we, the youth, it also affects some dignities out there. People, as in, they are, they are, they are means of surviving, police, to, do you know that? <laughs> this, this, was, this, this particular stuff will sound funny in your ear. I went out to one eatery where I was eating, it was a local joint. Police now came down there. I wanted to arrest the woman and said, uh, Madam, can I get the receipt of the bread that you are selling? The receipt of the bread you are selling. And you know, here in Nigeria, we just buy bread and, you know, sell it out. Even we start issuing receipts. So the thing sound from the woman was like, and I said they will arrest the woman for not selling original bread. I said, is this one normal? Well, in fact, we have to start arguing this stuff there. Come on, bread, just because of bread. And just two bread that is on the table there, they want to arrest Duma. They said Duma will pay a fine of 5,000. Duma let her pay his fight for her to be released. So these are the things that we face, police brutality. So they need to reform. Our goal is to, for them to reform police brutality and to give us good governance. So in fact, when I think, talk of good governance, we need good electricity, light to be on. Imagine in Nigeria here, we don't have light, but we are giving Ghana light. So that's that I don't know. I was reading a blog last week, and I said I want to give this another no, country. No, we, we, African we, country. We, we, we don't we don't give we don't give Ghana light. Okay, we give light to Benin and uh, probably Chad. To Ben, we don't Benin. Give light to Ghana anyway. No, uh, Chad. I think Chad. That Chad. Chad was no. Chad was um. Oh, I think that was what I read last week. But, like they want to give Chad light, but I don't know what yeah, Benin. We give, uh, Benin, we give, Benin. We give light to Benin anyway. So. To Benin. Okay, now, so these are the, 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 the yeah. stuff we need. We need electricity, we need um, good road, we need good governance, we need um, free education, as in, when, if not, even, though it's not, if, even though it's not free education, I at least everything about it should be laid to standard. So that is it. To add to what he's saying, I think to a large extent, the, the protests have achieved a whole lot of uh, some of the of the reasons why it was actually started in the first place at least for now government have started responding to to, to people to the people uh, because for them to just uh, go back and come out with uh, the next thing swat shows you that they know that people are really angry with them and so but um i feel that that it has not, would you, uh, it has not completed what it is supposed to have done. But this is just a kind of a wake up call for for the government to know that the youths are no longer sleeping. The youths are ready to do something different this time around, and they have to take the youths serious. Mm -hmm. So you are in agreement that the goal is to uh, end SARS. Is that? Is that the is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the first goal is to end SARS and police brutality. But along the line, other things came up, which is actually all about bad governance. Okay, so mm -hmm. it has started the process, but it has not completed the process of achieving its ultimate goal. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. How has the global pandemic? impacted the current situation? The, the, the pandemic so far, <laughs> uh, since the corona outbreak 
has been that of a negative one because uh, people, mostly the youths, many have lost their jobs. People have not been able to go back to work. People have not been working. People were in lockdown for about six, six months to seven months in their homes doing nothing. So economically, people are not okay. People don't really have finances to do things for themselves. So, but as we are getting out of it, the protest came up. So this whole thing have, uh, have all come against the general uh, public, okay? And uh, so it, uh, to a large extent, it has affected us economically. People don't really have money to spend. Dennis? Yeah, the pandemic level in this country, as it really teaches us a lot of things, you know? Here in Nigeria, so many people have various business. Why so many people have just been on only one business? Just like uh, someone who is, who is, uh, who is working in a, in a bank, suddenly they said, don't come to the bank again. As in, for like three months, four months, we've been indoors because of COVID-19. And the little you have, you spend it. So as in that period in time, you, your, your little savings that you have, you don't have it anymore. And you still going out, looking for where to, you know, ask for and the rest and people are telling you stories so what i'm trying to say in essence is that this covid 19 really teaches us a lot of things yes it teaches us how to invest in other businesses so that once these doors close this one might sustain you i don't know if you understand so these are the things because during that period it really makes us look wide in this country but i thank god that we surpass this um terrible pandemic of this country thank god for that and so does this largely impact lagos the state of Lagos, or is it, would you say it's fair to say it's all throughout the country? The state, the state of, um, of Nigeria. It's all throughout the country, all the, all the yeah. other states. All the states, yeah. All the states. We have about 36 states in Nigeria, I, and the federal capital territory making uh, 37. Okay, all these places have been affected because yeah, just very, like very. I said earlier, not of course, especially we in the tourism industry uh, have really been affected greatly uh, because there is no more travel. People are not moving from one point to the other. Okay, so the, the whole state, the whole Nigeria have had great impact negatively from the pandemic. And so what's some of the, the f things that you guys may have heard that you feel is false information? Something that you feel like people who are, whether they're, you know, watching this on the playback or if they, you know, look at the news, what's the one thing that you guys want people to get from what they're seeing you know, kind of being on the outside looking in when it comes to the country of Nigeria. What's what do we need to to know? Yeah, I look at yes, yes. Uh, I I look at it from the the positive side. Okay, everything about Nigeria is not negative. Okay. Yeah. But because we want something good to happen, that is why the youths protested. Okay. But now come to yeah. think of it. Um, let's come to our normal day-to-day -day life. Nigeria has the largest population in Africa and the highest GDP economic value, and uh, it's a, a good destination for investment, okay? And also, mostly, uh, when we look back at the issue of the slave trade, uh, looking at the population density of Nigeria and the coverage area that we have, you will believe with me that it's, it, we should assume that a lot of people we are taking, a lot of ancestors we are taking from this part of the world. And for, for, some, uh, for people who are in the diaspora, who would want to come back to, to Africa, I think Nigeria is a good destination for you to be one, culturally immersed for your people. Yes, and also there are a lot of business opportunities as well for people who want to better Nigeria. Uh, since we have the largest economy, even though there, there has been 
uh, believe that Nigeria is not safe. It's not everywhere in Nigeria that is not safe. There are places that are not safe, and we that are in the tourism industry knows these areas, and that is why it is good to have us on this platform so that we'll be able to know, coordinate, organize things and make travel or maybe to uh, take in any visitor uh, who is coming down and make uh, the process easier for the people. So Nigeria has a lot of uh, positive potential. If our government should listen to us, to li listen to what we've protested for, definitely uh, we see a drastic change in the next uh, few months and everyone will want to rush down here. Yeah, you know, and to be honest, you know, this story may have turned, you know, some people off. And that's why we really wanted to take it on in a real way and talk to you gentlemen who are actually there. But from what I've seen, you know, here with Black Travelers Network, you know, most of the people who are interested in traveling to Nigeria have been interested in traveling to Nigeria for years. And so this really has prompted us to really take a closer look at, you know, how we're presenting Nigeria in terms of organizing a group of people to travel uh, with us to Nigeria. Because one of the things that I always tell people, and this is from you know knowing a number of different Nigerians here in the United States, many of them recommend like if you're if you're gonna visit, it's best to go with someone you know. Um, and you know it's it or uh, go with a small group. It's not it's actually not recommended uh, to visit the country um, by yourself. And I actually think that that's a, a great thing in terms of making sure that people who are introduced to Nigeria are introduced to Nigeria in the right way and the proper right way. So I can honestly say like, even for us, this we connected uh, our trip to Nigeria uh, with our trip that's coming up to Ghana. But, you know, Nigeria is such a special place, and I really believe it should be on the top of everyone's radar that we really want to focus just on Nigeria. And so those in our travel community will get more information about a, a trip that we will be looking to, to do specifically to Nigeria in 2021. Um, I, I believe it's a, a, a great place, um, not just for... Um, you know, not just for uh, folks in the diaspora to visit, but also for folks in the diaspora to uh, take a closer look at some of your, we've had a number of people who have done um, their whole uh, DNA uh, ancestry and have found direct connections uh, to uh, their, their, uh, their particular families. Uh, I know specific people who have found uh, Nigerians in, uh, uh, in Nigeria who are connected to them. So I think it's a great opportunity to go even beyond just the visit and really to develop some real relationships. For you, for you, for those of you who are there and who live there, what would you tell you know, those folks who, who are interested uh, in, in visiting the country in the future? I um I will tell them I will tell I will tell folks out there that Nigeria is a great destination to visit. Okay, let's let's not let them not focus on what we have on the news presently as a result of the issue of SARS and police brutality. Okay, but let them focus on the positive side of it and the people like us who are actually in the system who can coordinate tools for them. Coming to Nigeria is very safe because we know the hot, uh, hot spots and we know the good, good places where you can actually visit. So everything in abundance. Okay, we, we, we have the large population of youths, we have good music, we have good food, we have very, uh, elegant festivals, just like you have, we have the, like the Oshun Shogo festival that comes up every August, okay? We also have the festival at Badagri that comes up every October, okay? Uh, then we also have the almighty celebration 
also that comes up within August and maybe sometimes in October every year. So these are things that they could come down to experience and also have the opportunity to connect back with uh, people of the same uh, of, of the same root. Okay, most especially those that have done their ancestry and uh, and it shows that they are from this part of the world that is actually Nigeria. Um, we, we, we guarantee them one thing, safety. Um, when, when we talk about insecurity in Nigeria, before the protests, it is actually in the Northeast and not all around Nigeria. And why traveling to Nigeria if you are afraid? Uh, we don't travel at night. We make sure that safety is, is the key component of, of our tools. Um, I want to open it up to Tyra to, to see if you have any questions, any specific questions for the gentleman. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, you two, for sharing your stories. I have a couple of questions, actually. Um, I want to know, because in Nigeria, you know, you have your Igbo tribe, your Yoruba tribe, your Hausa tribe. Um, and I'm really curious to know the effect um, that tribalism has had and the NSARS movement, because I think a lot of times it's quite divided, you know, your Igbo, your Yoruba, but it seems like people are coming together. So have you noticed that throughout this NSARS movement, that kind of tribalism is not doesn't hold as much importance, but it's really about just helping the state of Nigeria and not just helping your own. Yeah, um, the the ancestors the ancestors protest was never about tribe. Okay, every person came out to protest for good governance. This is the first time it has ever happened in Nigeria that nobody was talking about. I am Igbo or you are Yoruba, I am Hausa, or you are Ibibu, or this. Nobody talked about that all through the time of the process. You saw, we, we saw kind of unity among the youths. We saw this synergy that we want something different, not something that the old generation have been using to destabilize any role in this present protest. And we believe that this is the kind of unity that we want in Nigeria so that we would have a better country. Should I say every, everything, you know, during the end times period, um, the markets, the places are kind of uh, kind of closed, but right now, based on the government outside, um, following up the youth, uh, what the youth want, everywhere is now becoming normal. Like, I'm so happy hearing that markets are coming frequently every day. If I have been, can you see that the way I'm smiling since I've been, I'm kind of very, very happy. So everything is now becoming normal and standardized back to normal. So that is it. So coming down to Nigeria is safe, safe for anybody coming down. God bless you. Thank you. And I guess my other question as well is there's a, so much talk about it being a youth movement. So I'm quite curious why is it there? I mean, Obviously, population-wise, I think the youth takes, it's like 65% are youth in Nigeria, if I'm correct. Um, so I'm really curious to know why is this a youth movement, um, but also who is leading the movement? Is there like a certain political figurehead that we should be looking out for um, or a certain political party? Because 2023 is not around the corner. I mean, it seems like it is, but it's going to take a while with this pandemic. So I'm quite curious to know kind of what to start looking out for in regard to this youth movement um, and why the center, why youth are in the center of it? Um, the youth, is the five percent of the youth coming out for this protest. Yes, we need, we need to come out because, like they said, the, the, the youth is the future leader of tomorrow, like they said. So I believe we are the future leader, so we need to fight for our, our rights. And that's why you see um, the multitude of youth coming out for this protest, because we know what we are looking for. We know what we are fighting for, so that is it. Like uh, I becoming a grad, I'm a graduate of um, Namdas University, Chemical Engineering, and so many people. But going out there looking for jobs, you find that they will tell you do this one, do that one. After doing, at the end of the day, you will get what you are looking for. So people are here. I don't know if you understand. So that is the main um, stop. So coming out, with this is five percent, like you said. It's, let me even say seventy percent of the youth came out for this protest because they are really affected in, with the bad governance of this country. By the time that everything is already going well and becoming balanced. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, I would say this. 
uh, during the protest, you, you hear this phrase that the, the protest had no leader. Everyone was part of the leadership of this protest. Mm -hmm. And even up to now, even though we're trying to, we, we, we had some people who were at the forefront, like icons, people like uh, the, the celebrities, we're actually, and social media influencers, we're actually at the forefront of doing it. Nobody, nobody claimed leadership for, for the protest, which was actually a very good one because if someone has claimed leadership for this protest, the government would have shortchanged the people by calling in these few individuals and pay them some money and maybe they find a means to end, end the protest, okay? And uh, we it wouldn't have achieved, or it wouldn't have created the kind of impact it made for the period of 12 days or 13 days that it lasted, okay? Now, on the fact of uh, the, the movement being that of 70% uh, of the youth population came out for this, shows you that the people that we, the youth in Nigeria, really want change. We want things to be better. We want a better country that people like you would come back to and be proud of that you visited Nigeria. Thank you so much. And then my last question, um, obviously being international and uh, living in England right now and then you're in America. Um, and there's only so much that we can kind of do if we're not in the front lines, if we're not protesting with you guys. So I would love to know, how can people abroad help? Because is it talking more about it? Is it informing people more about Nigeria? Um, what can people do internationally to help? But in terms of the protests or in terms of um, visiting I guess Nigeria? In terms of supporting the cause of NSARS. Um, and then as well as kind of helping, I don't want to say helping Nigeria, because I think uh, there's this big kind of talk about how, you know, if the United States, if people in America didn't say stuff, if people in England didn't say stuff, then the Nigerian government maybe wouldn't have come out. They Like, Bahari wouldn't have made the message saying, guys, don't worry, we got it all covered. So I believe that sometimes you do need that international recognition and that support, if it's through media, if it's through social media or celebrities, so people and your government can actually speak up about it um, or else it'll just be swept under the rug. So I'm quite curious to know how, I guess, as an international person, as a person living abroad, that is Nigerian, that I can help promote the NSARS movement, um, but then as well also see how I can contribute to Nigeria and creating yeah. this leadership, so yeah. This is the era of the social media, okay? And I think the best way the international media or international people like you, people outside in the diaspora could be part of this is to help us with this whole thing, write about it, talk about it, organize actually, uh, get to know what is happening. Then also you have uh, people on ground here, like a correspondent, who will give you the real thing happening in the country. Then you can use that to reach out to, to the people over there to help us um, talk about it internationally and I know when this thing is being talked about it, it internationally the government will really be on their toes because they wouldn't want um, bad reputation for themselves okay even in as much as they've been trying to fight and use every means to suppress the information and ground um, they they will try but when when people who are out there like you have us to propagate the story more definitely they would rather do the right thing than trying to suppress the story and the country will become a better place that's what i think so i think during this whole protest the, the social media played a very great role most especially twitter and facebook okay so all the social media platforms could be uh, very good uh, uh, a media uh, medium that you can use to help us to propagate the, the the story. Actually, we want a good country, and definitely we're gonna get it. Dennis, you said it all. 
Um, the only way you can support us is um, through social media. We're just you know, online, you know. Anywhere you are, you gather your your mem- your, your friends, your family. You just you know, keep on pushing it online. As in protesting on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the rest. So these are the only way you can support us here in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the, la- the last thing I want to say because I I like that question that you asked, Tyra. I think it's a very important question. And for us, one of the the roles that we like to play, whether it's, you know, in assisting, you know, whether it's assisting youth on the ground um, or actually assisting other, you know, folks in, in any particular country, we like to, as our way of, um, I would say helping is really about going and visiting. You know, I can't stress the importance of that enough because, you know, this is a great discussion and I encourage anyone who watched the, watches this on the playback to definitely share uh, this video because it does lead to more awareness. But the best way for you to understand what's happening is a place is to put aside the funds that you need to put aside and go visit. You know, when we go and visit some of these countries, we're not only learning about the culture and the history and and how it's applicable to the Black experience in that part of the world, but we're also, you know, interacting with locals. We're, you know, participating in local commerce that goes directly into supporting, you know, the brothers and sisters in these countries. And so, you know, I, I, I look at this in, in terms of, you know, there's the role we can play on social media that Confidence and Dennis have, have so uh, eloquently highlighted, but we do have a responsibility in the diaspora to make it a point to visit this very important country. This country is so important that I'm telling you, with as we look towards the future within the next 50 to 100 years, the whole continent of Africa, specifically Nigeria, will be one of the major leaders in the world. Okay, and so I want people to like really let that sink in because as you you all have indicated, Nigeria does have one of the youngest populations and one of the largest populations in the country. So now is the time to start, you know, making sure that this country is a priority for you to visit at least, I would say at, at some point in the next two to five years. And so, you know, obviously we have a lot of work to do uh, on the ground in terms of con- con- continuing to educate people about uh, what's happening and um, not just the challenges that, that are being faced because there are challenges in every country <laughs> that folks are, expa- are facing, especially now, but really the importance of our presence uh, as folks in the diaspora in, in terms of actually going over to visit. And so with that being said, I mean, are there any final words that anyone has? Just thank you for letting me be part of this. Um, And, you know, I have such, so much love for Nigeria. And I think that being able to be Nigerian, I'm so proud to be Nigerian. Yes, I live in the United States before and I live in England, but to be Nigerian is something I'm so proud of. And listening to all of these stories, the future of Nigeria is so bright. The passion, the love is there and they want change. And I'm pretty sure in the next, as you said, two to five years, this is a place not only to visit, but I think to really embrace the culture and start to connect with it more. Uh, Cause having been to Nigeria myself, it gives me this better understanding of the issues that go on. And when you see the NSARS movement happening, you can connect with it more and you want to help more. So I definitely agree that um, it's a place to visit and a place to really connect with. I know being African-American as well, and all of us know exactly where we come from, but still, if it's Ghana, if it's Nigeria, you know, Africa matters. So <laughs> please pay attention to Africa um, and immerse with it. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, um, I, I would like to say that we should, or whoever that is listening or watching should, um, look at the protest from the positive side of it because it is going to give us a very positive result in the next few months okay yeah and nigeria will become the best destination you can really want to visit 
and we we know that things are going to change for good. And I I think the the time of the uh, the protest was actually uh, a good one, so that we will have a better country where people in the diaspora, uh, diaspora can come and visit. So just like uh, uh, she said, um, it is good to visit. And that is one of the, that is the best way also that you can help us apart from being on the social media. All right. So I really appreciate meeting you here on the same platform. And uh, I hope that um, in the next couple of months, our country will be a better one. We'll have better roads, we have better life, the better electricity, electricity system, and everything will be normal again, and people would have to, to come. Uh, it's, Nigeria is a very lovely country to visit. We have great culture, great festival, just like I said earlier, good food, great people, good music, and all that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Dennis, you had something final? Yeah, um, like you said, Nigeria is going to be a great place. Like, you know, if you're, if you're looking at the protest going on in Nigeria, you should not ever look at the negative side, rather the positive side, because we're only fighting for, for better Nigeria. We're fighting for good governance, we're fighting for, you know, for good things, of which I know that since the government has started um, attending to our needs, I believe in the next few months, everything is going to be balanced, you know? So that is it. So if you're coming to Nigeria, you come peacefully. Like I said before, if you're coming for tour, you meet on the tour guide, and we know the routes, the, the routes in and out of Nigeria that will lead you safely and come out safely. Nothing, nothing bad is going to happen. We know that security is going to be very tight before in the next few months. So I believe so that everything is going to be well. I think so. Indeed, indeed. Many thanks to each of you. Um, for those of you who are watching, make sure you share this video. We will have future videos where we will talk about another completely different aspect of Nigeria. So definitely stay tuned. Thank you all for being a part of this discussion. And until next time.